What's going on guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am back. You know, I get hit up every single day by so many of you about all the people that don't believe in you. You know, from your parents to your friends to, to people you hang out with. I mean, it doesn't stop. But the only thing is, it really doesn't matter who doesn't believe in you. What really matters is if you believe in yourself. If you can believe in yourself, if you can get confidence about yourself, I guarantee you not only you're going to be confident, not only in this game, but also in life, and you're going to be so successful. This is your year, but you got to believe in yourself. Get it and keep going. Welcome back to another Pro Guys video. All right, so today I'm going to be going over six dangerous mentalities that prevent you from improving. And I'm talking about mindsets that you need to avoid if you want to climb an arena or do well in tournaments. So I'm going to be telling you what they are and how you can move away from them, all right? Some of these mindsets can really negatively affect you in real life and in games, so it's important that you know. All right, so for today's question, I want you to tell me what you think is holding you back. I have a feeling a lot of you guys are gonna say my ping, which is totally understandable. High ping is just one of those, you know, automatic disadvantages that a lot of people go through. So whatever that is, that is preventing you from moving forward in the game, I want you to let us know in the comments. And before we begin, if you're tired of always dying in game, you should check out ProGuys.com. Okay, so on our site, we have courses that go over building, aiming, editing, game sense, and so much more. Everything you need to improve at one location. And with our lineup of pro coaches, I mean, you can learn one-on-one -on -one with the top player. Like the video before we begin and drop a sub if you haven't already. Then follow the link in the description to get started. All right, guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to scream this out. It's time to sit back. Come on relax and grab some of my favorite candy where's it at oh it's that bunch of crunch and let's get this going okay so there's no denying fortnite has got a whole lot of randomness you know it just feels like it's everywhere right from the loot you gather to the safe zones you get right games are pretty much always an rng fest in one way or another but truthfully if you blame your losses on being unlucky you know you're only going to hinder your ability to improve Sure, you know, while a single game here or there might be lost partly due to bad luck, I get it. You know, that's only one game. Your arena rating isn't determined by one match. It's determined over dozens or hundreds of them. Neither is your placement in a cash cup or other similar tournaments. Those are played out over 10 games. And while 10 might be somewhat of a small number, it's still, you know, really enough to significantly reduce the impact luck has on your overall performance. Look, if success in Fortnite was somehow like hard tied to RNG, then we just wouldn't have the same players doing so well and winning events all the time. Players like Unknown Army, man, and Benji Fishy, who can win tourney after tourney after tourney, like it's no big deal. You know, I think these guys are really good enough to prove that luck isn't as significant of a factor as many of us really believe. So what can you do to change if you're the type of guy that always cries out, unlucky? Well, you know, I suggest that you look for realistic solutions to the problems you blame RNG on, all right? For example, okay, so if you die early five times during cash cup run, all right, you could blame that on weak weapons or a lack of shields. But we have no power over, you know, what pops out of a chest. You know, what we do have power over, however, is where we land. We can choose less populated areas, you know, less populated spots to guarantee safer early games, you know, or if shields are that big of an issue, you know, you could just drop out a place near mushrooms, you know, fishing holes or a slurp truck and try a path around that. So if you blame losing on purely bad luck, you're only hurting yourself in the long run. So avoid this mentality, guys, as much as possible. Trust me. Next up, it's something you should never do if you're taking the match seriously. Underestimate your opponents. Don't do that. Please don't do that. You know, I feel as if this is something that, you know, we've all done. I'm guilty of that for sure. You know, we see a default skin running around ahead of us, right? And we think, oh my goodness, this is going to be a lot of fun. We roll up on them believing it's a free kill only to have them just put up a serious fight. Then we die and then we are angry over our defeat. So that's just not a moment that any of us enjoy, right? But you see, you know, the problem with underestimating opponents is that it can lower your guard, man. If you think your opponent is going to play one way, it's going to cause you to only think about that. Instead, you know, you should be treating every opponent, guys, like they're fully capable of beating you. Not only does that produce better results for you, but it also enforces good habits for when you're actually up against really good players. Now, you know, it's possible to get away with underestimating the enemy, right? For instance, 
if you're a decent enough player, the first game of each cash cup isn't going to have much competition, let's be real. The skill level is pretty much guaranteed to be lower than what you're used to. So, you know, you can sort of treat players as if they're worse. But even then, guys, you still need to be careful. You never ever know like what a bad player is capable of. Maybe they have a gold pump and a decent enough aim to just one shot you, you never know. Or they could have traps in their inventory and just know how to use them. And that's why pros still to this day work extremely hard during their first game of each cash cup, even though, you know, they know that they're the best in the server. You know, one small misstep and it's game over for them. So I advise you guys today, treat every opponent with respect. And that way, you know, you're less likely to be caught off guard and lose your match. You know, probably the most backward mentality we see a lot of players is blaming the enemy, man. You know, I know that sounds crazy, but for some reason, certain players die and then put the blame on the enemy. Like, really? Whether it's because the opponent just tried, you know, really hard in the fight or they did something unexpected that couldn't be predicted. They act as if it's the enemy's fault for getting an LM, which is ridiculous when you think about it. You know, the problem with this mentality, guys, is that, you know, it just leads to us making more and more and more excuses like, you know, oh, my opponent won just because they got lucky. Come on. Or just thinking an enemy won only because they third partied you. You know, while those, you know, they are true sometimes, like they don't really matter. Why? Because you don't have control over what your opponents do. The only control you have, guys, is over yourself. Meaning like you need to be thinking of what you could have done differently to avoid an unfavorable outcome. All right. Like if you're dying to third parties all the time, all right, something's going on. All right, we gotta, we gotta check you out. Something's going on. Maybe you need to put more thought into taking each engagement. You know, there are so many factors that just go into deciding on a fight. Like, you know, what part of the game you're in, how many opponents are nearby, uh, you know, how much attention you draw to your location. You know, if a third party rolls up and finishes you off, I mean, come on, they're just doing what we would all do in that situation. You can't hold them responsible. So if you're serious about improving, what you need to do is stop blaming enemy players, guys, and start paying attention to who? Yourself. Focus on yourself and you know what you can do to get better rather than just blaming external factors and you're gonna begin to see yourself improve dramatically. So next is what we're calling the I'm already good mentality. Okay, so pretty much when someone thinks they're just really, really good at the game, but they're really, really not, ooh, we see it all the time. People straight up asking like, why don't I win cash cups? I'm already really, really good. And when you ask them what their weaknesses are, they say, oh, I don't have any weaknesses, like, which is crazy, right? Everybody has flaws in some form or another. I don't care who you are, you're not perfect. The biggest problem with this mentality, like right here, is that it leads to complacency and thinking you don't need to improve because you're already the best. Who are you? I know you're out there. That your building is top notch. Your, your aim is on point already. That you should be reaping the rewards already because of how good you are. But that's really never the case, all right? There's always something that's holding you back. It could be your game sense, you know, that requires a bit of VOD reviewing, or maybe your mechanics aren't as high level as you think. It's why it's so important to see your games through an objective lens. If this describes you, my advice would be, well, admit that you make mistakes. Yeah, that's the first step. Admit that you're not perfect, okay? Never be happy like where you're at because nobody has ever done with, you know, uh, the constant quest to find answers, all right? Even when Kobe was playing at his peak, my man Kobe, shout out to the Mamba. You know, he didn't stop looking for ways to improve. He figured out what he needed to work on constantly, no matter the MVPs, no matter the championships, he still wanted to improve and get better. He paid attention to every small detail and he began trying to fix those problems. So a lot of us can benefit from Kobe's mentality, man. So definitely give it a shot. Next, you need to avoid the blaming the game mentality. Who does that? You know, I know we've already talked about RNG and to be fair, you know, that kind of fits into this category too. But other mechanics are also often used as scapegoats, blaming overpowered weapons or items being in the game or even putting the fault on a lack of them. So far with chapter two, it's mostly been players complaining about a lack of mobility. You know, we always hear the phrase, oh, I would have just won if I had a launch pad. And look, you know, I get it. While it's totally reasonable to try and argue why mobility needs to be brought back, it's still not really a beneficial mentality, you know, to have if you want to improve. Because as with the other mindsets that we've talked about, you really have no control over how the game is designed. All you can do is just play it and, you know, come up with ways to adapt to changes. 
You know, with no mobility in chapter two, we started to see the pickaxe meta form. And while that didn't really last too long before Epic made it illegal, <laughs> it was technically a way top players overcame the lack of movement. And that's not all they did, of course. You know, a lot of players started doing efficient tunnels to conserve materials. You know, they also began going for impact frags more often, right? Playing in games a bit more aggressively. The game changed and, you know, the best players changed with it. So this is my point. My point is that, you know, while, you know, a particular mechanic might not be fair in your favor. All right. There's really nothing that you can do to change it. Instead, all you need to do is just really just come up with ways to just play around them. If you don't want to be held back, a much better solution than just blaming the game. All right, so finally, guys, the mindset we think has the most significant detriment on a player growth is being scared. You know, having an anxious outlook on new experiences. Let me tell you what it's going to do. It's only going to lead you to avoiding the things that are, are going to improve you as a player, period. You know, so many of us and, you know, it's a majority of us, I say, are afraid of engagements. And I've been there. You know, we spend the whole game looting, trying to avoid players only to eventually encounter somebody. And then we panic. You know, while passive play is undoubtedly, you know, a valid tactic, if you're playing to get better, it's not really going to help you out too much. Yeah, I would avoid that. What you should be doing instead, you know, for at least some of your games is playing aggressively. You know, try to engage in as many new situations as possible. This is what a lot of pros use arenas for. You know, they hard W key and they just try to deal with whatever the game throws at them, right? And if they lose the match, it's really not a big deal. You know, at least they've improved their mechanics and they've learned something about why they lost. So the idea here is that, you know, you're strengthening your skills every match you get into. And that's the whole point of it. You want to get better, enjoy the journey. So you might be saying right now, well, I do play aggressively from time to time, but I still get really nervous. Who's that? All right. And you're probably asking, what should I do? Well, all right. There's really, really no easy solution to that. You know, we, we have a couple of videos on our channel that go over how to be more confident, you know, but really the gist of it is that you just have to remind yourself what you're capable of. Yeah. You know, there's a reason pros like Face Dubs and Mongrel always scream out loud that they're the best. It's confidence. You know, it really helps instill that swag and, and that confidence. It reminds them of what they practice for. So while we did say earlier not to underestimate opponents, I get it. That isn't what you're doing right here, though. You're focusing on your capabilities, not your opponent. So you got to speak, you know, that positivity over yourself, man. And like I said, if you believe in yourself, there's really nothing to stop you. So don't be afraid to take a leap into new experiences. It's just going to make you less nervous in game and it's really going to improve you as an overall player. All right, guys. So the six mentalities you have to avoid are all right, blaming lousy luck underestimating opponents, you know, putting fault on enemy players, thinking you're the best, blaming the game and being scared of new experiences. So guys, you got to avoid all of these things. Okay. And you're going to see yourself transform into a better player in no time. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, make sure to like subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.